Human rights is, um, geez, that's a good question. Human rights. Well, that's a tough one. Wow. Um, what about I don't even know how to give that a definition. I would probably have to do a little bit of homework or something. Yeah, any right that I think any, just as a normal, you know, uh, human, any. The rights that humans have. Uh, oh, that's a very large debate. We just take them for granted that they're there, but we don't even consider what they are. Human rights are the rights you have simply because you're human. It's how you instinctively expect and deserve to be treated as a person, like the right to live freely, to speak your mind, and to be treated as an equal. There are many kinds of rights. Most apply to a certain group. But human rights are the only ones that apply to absolutely everyone, everywhere. That means kids, old people, poor people, basketball players, garbage men, rappers, teachers, Africans, Indians, Albanians, Christians, Muslims, Kabbalists, atheists, your mom, your dad, your next door neighbor, and you all have the exact same human rights. In other words, they're universal. But the question remains, what are they? Name human, the human rights? What the human rights are? Um, the right to live. Um, equality between all peoples. Right to religion, the right to... Is there supposed to be a list somewhere I should be aware of? According to the United Nations, there are a total of 30 human rights, which are usually lumped together and called simply human rights. They're all listed out in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is the world's most widely accepted document on the subject. But it was a long time in coming. At first, there were no human rights. If you were in with the right crowd, you were safe. If you weren't, well, you weren't. But then a guy named Cyrus the Great decided to change all that. After conquering Babylon, he did something completely revolutionary. He announced that all slaves were free to go. He also said people had the freedom to choose their religion, no matter what crowd they were a part of. They documented his words on a clay tablet known as the Cyrus Cylinder. And just like that, human rights were born. The idea spread quickly to Greece, to India, and eventually to Rome. They noticed that people naturally followed certain laws, even if they weren't told to. They called this natural law, but it kept getting trampled on by those in power. Not until a thousand years later in England did they finally get a king to agree that no one can overrule the rights of the people, not even a king. People's rights were finally recognized and they were now safe from those in power. Kind of. It still took a bunch of British rebels declaring their independence before the king got the point that all men are created equal. Which isn't to say he liked the idea, but he couldn't stop them and America was born. The French immediately followed with their own revolution for their own rights. Their list was even longer, and they insisted that these rights weren't just made up. They were natural. The Roman concept of natural law had become natural rights. Unfortunately, not everyone was so thrilled. In France, a general named Napoleon decided to overthrow the new French democracy and crown himself emperor of the world. He almost succeeded. But the countries of Europe joined forces and defeated him. Human rights was again a hot topic. They drew up international agreements, broadly granting many rights across Europe, but only across Europe. The rest of the world somehow still didn't qualify. Instead, they got invaded, conquered, and consumed by Europe's massive empires. But then a young lawyer from India decided enough was enough. His name was Mahatma Gandhi, and in the face of violence, he insisted that all people of Earth had rights, not just in Europe. Eventually, even Europeans started to agree. But it wasn't gonna be that easy. Two world wars erupted. Hitler exterminated half the Jewish population of Earth in horrifying Nazi death camps. And all told, 90 million people died. Never had human rights been so terrifyingly close to extinction. 
and never had the world been more desperate for change. So the countries of Earth banded together and formed the United Nations. Their basic purpose was to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person. But what were human rights? Were they the proclamations of Cyrus, the natural laws of Rome, the declarations of France? Everyone seemed to have a slightly different idea of what human rights should be. But under the supervision of Eleanor Roosevelt, they finally agreed on a set of rights that applied to absolutely everyone. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The French concept of natural rights had finally become human rights. So in summary, at first, only a few lucky people had any rights, until one of those guys decided, hey, other people should have some rights too, which was great, except not everyone agreed. And it only took a few thousand years of fighting and declarations and more fighting until everyone finally agreed that human rights should apply to everyone. And they all lived happily ever after. Except for one little problem. If people have the right to food and shelter, why are 16,000 children dying of starvation every day? One every five seconds. If people have freedom of speech, why are thousands in prison for speaking their minds? If people have the right to education, why are over a billion adults unable to read? If slavery has truly been abolished, why are 27 million people still enslaved today? More than twice as many as in 1800. The fact is, when it was signed, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights did not have the force of law. It was optional. And despite many more documents, conventions, treaties, and laws, it's still a little more than words on a page. So the question is, who will make those words a reality? I have a dream today. When Dr. King marched for racial equality, he was marching for rights that had been guaranteed by the United Nations for almost two decades. But still, he marched. When Nelson Mandela stood up for social justice in the 1990s, his country had already agreed to abolish such discrimination for almost 40 years. But still, he fought. Those who fight today against torture, poverty, and discrimination are not giants or superheroes. They're people, kids, mothers, fathers, teachers, free-thinking individuals who refuse to be silent who realize that human rights are not a history lesson. They're not words on a page. They're not speeches or commercials or PR campaigns. They are the choices we make every day as human beings. They are the responsibility we all share to respect each other, to help each other, and to protect those in need. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, where, after all, do universal human rights begin? in small places close to home. So close and so small that they cannot be seen on any maps of the world. Yet they are the world of the individual person, the neighborhood he lives in, the school or college he attends, the factory, farm, or office where he works. Such are the places where every man, woman, and child seeks equal justice, equal opportunity, equal dignity without discrimination. Unless these rights have meaning there, they have little meaning anywhere. Can you tell which of these children was not born free? Can you tell which of these children was not born equal? Can you tell which of these children does not deserve to be treated with dignity? We can't either. Human right number one. We are all born free and equal. 
Steven. Eric, right here. I'll take him right there. <laughs> All right, take care. Thank you. Right here. It greeted you at birth. It was there for your first step. Your first mistake. Your first kiss. It's with you when you win. When you lose. When you pick yourself up again. In every moment, you can feel it. Life. Human right number three. The right to life. Okay, kids, here we are at the slavery exhibit. Now, as you can see, the slaves were kidnapped from their homes, chained together for weeks. They would cram them onto these ships in very appalling conditions. Thousands of women and children are being smuggled across the border. Sexual trafficking of children. And as you can see right here, they were treated like animals. They worked all day long for no pay. In sweatshops raided by police, children forced into slave labor. Some of the slave masters were very cruel. They whipped them and they beat them, as you can see in some of these pictures. Well, well, brutal, even fatal. So, before moving on, are there any questions? Um, does this still happen today? When I was walking home from school, they asked me for my money. I said no. And all my friends ran home because they were scared he might punch them too. I was screaming, but he just wouldn't stop. He always said he would hit me. I just didn't think he actually would. I don't know what I did, but they just kept on kicking me. They tied me up and dragged me outside. They stripped me of my dignity. She said she was going to teach me a lesson. He said I wasn't listening. I didn't think he'd get so mad. James. Right. Welcome to my country, my friends. I have a right. Really? Huh? <laughs> Where do you think you are? I have a right. Huh? I have rights! Uh, only rights you have. Yeah! Not the rights I give you. Uh, ready! One! Two! Different words describe different people. But in the eyes of the law, there's one that fits us all. Human right number seven. We're all equal before the law. Yo. This is a story about human rights. For those that don't know, you need to. Yo.
a starving artist But his lyrics sold worldwide His friend and manager was a snake in the sky Then he was bitten His song sold without his permission Saw his record on the shelf The snake had stolen his vision But knowing his rights he could protect himself Fair treatment by fair course He got the law to help The other dude just sunk weak Looked like a punk Could hardly open his mouth and speak Popping that jump You better get up, stand up If you've been done wrong You better stand up for your rights Like that Molly song Get yourself represented Lawfully defended Know your human rights Don't ever surrender No Don't ever surrender Somebody just tell me. Gosh, let's talk to somebody. <laughs> Let me go. Next case. The People versus Martin White. Mr. White has been charged with- Guilty. Next case. But Your Honor, you, you haven't heard the charges yet. Guilty! Next case! Guilty! 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 I have been present! Guilty! Next case! I wouldn't have to raise my voice if you just give it back and stop being like a criminal. I don't have your cell phone. Oh God, I don't have look your cell at yourself. Phone. What are you offering? Is this a thief's huh? uniform? Oh you see all these people standing around here? Oh, Why am oh, I the one? I I'm Why sorry, are you homie. Me right okay. Oh. What? Don't make this a big deal. Just give it back, okay? Did you see me? Did yeah, you see and you know, I just know you took it. Where are your witnesses? Look at Where are your witnesses? Did you see me? Did you see me? You left us in the bathroom. Chinese. I am Russian. I am East African. I'm Canadian. I am Filipina. I am Irish. I am Bulgarian. Korean. I am American. I am Brazilian. Italian. Mexican. I'm British. Swedish. French. I'm Israeli. Mongolian. I'm Japanese. 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 We are mankind. I believe in the spirit. I believe in trust. Beauty. I 
believe in my mom. Strawberry ice cream. Fortune cookies. Chocolate. I believe in the tooth fairy. Being honest with yourself. I believe in Santa Claus. Aliens, of course. I believe what I want to believe. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. Make sure you stay with her the whole time. She's new to the country. This is her first Mom. day. This Mom. is a brand Mom. new country. Mom. It's a whole different it's culture. Gonna be okay. Now make sure you stay with her the whole time. I'll be here right okay. after school to pick you up. Okay, Mom. Okay, have fun. Bye-bye. Bye. Ignore my mom. She's so annoying. She's totally freaking out about this. like every single day. How many schools do you have in your village? None.
According to estimates, over one billion people live in appalling levels of poverty. Denied even basic standards of food, water. Nearly half of the world's population earns less than... Dude. <laughs> this is pirated. So? So, I wanted the real thing. What's the difference, man? The difference? So when I start making movies, people ripping me off. <laughs> I wouldn't rip you off, man. Prove it. The world I see is fair and free, where people can travel wherever they please. And children can eat and have shoes on their feet and not be afraid when they walk on the street. It's not like there has to be rainbows and bunnies. The streets full of people are dancing like dummies. But freedom to live, to learn, and to play, to just be yourself and think your own way. The road I see may sound crazy to you, but hopefully, someday, you'll see it too. Good morning. I'm here to read you your rights. My what? We are all free and equal. Don't discriminate. You have the right to life. You have the right to life. And to live in freedom and safety. You have a right to education. You have a right to your own things. You have the right to social security. You have the right to play. You have the right to democracy. You have the right to asylum. You have the right to take responsibility. And no one and nobody can take these rights and freedoms away from you. Why are you doing this? You have a right to know. We're all born free and equal. Don't discriminate. These are your human rights. There are 30 of them. They belong to you. You don't have to buy them or apply for them or ask permission to have them. They're just yours. No matter who you are, where you're from, how old you are, or anything else. It's just that simple. Now some people may try to ignore your rights, or violate them, or pretend they don't exist. But they can't change the fact that they're yours. Human right number 30, no one can take away your human rights.